I am Andrius Kulikauskas. This is Math for Wisdom. Today, uh, we have a meeting of the sociology study group uh, with uh, Aslam Kakarl, Kakarl and myself. And uh, we're going to um, talk about the ways of reasoning uh, in general, and we'll be considering how to apply that uh, in sociology to a particular problem that we'll be working with our full uh, study group. So uh, welcome, Aslam, and uh, uh, please, uh, why don't you tell us about the ways of reasoning? Thank you. Thank you, Andres. Thank you so much. I am really uh, enjoying uh, this uh, uh, group. Uh, so um, one of the things that has come up in, in my research is how do I go about, one of the questions that has come up is how do I go about my understanding or what approach do I take to uh, understand the world, right? Like questions of issues in the world. So, I mean, as we know, there are, you know, the types of reasoning. One is inductive, uh, reasoning or induction, uh, deductive reasoning or deduction, and uh, then the third one is adduction. So uh, I don't call myself an expert on these reasons, but this is just for me to, I mean, I know them, of course, because as a researcher, I have to know them, uh, but I am also um, uh, doing this to explore these uh, types of reasoning, uh, reasonings even uh, further, right? So induction is, you know, simply put, we, uh, what we, we, we start with an observation. Um, and then all observations, and then we go from there to scale. So based on the observations, we develop uh, uh, a hypothesis, or a hypothesis, or a hypothesis, or a theory. Uh, but I think the problem that comes up is, you know, how do you, can you observe things without, like, some kind of theoretical framework in, in mind? You know, can you make sense of things without having a frame? without having a, um, it's like if I can uh, use an analogy to explain this, you know, I think we all have like, we all have theories in, without uh, explicitly learning uh, about theory, right, in the systematic sense, uh, because we grow up in the in the world, we see other people, we are part of societies and communities. So it's like, uh, the way I think about theory is that we have these, it's like folders on the computer screen. You know, like you have these folders and then you, you find data and then you like place the data, you know, videos, audio, articles, books, this and that. In, in those folders. For me, I think observations are a way of, like, we have like these files or folders in our mind, they may be implicit, they come from socialization, from, uh, uh, you know, culturation, so from just a way of being in a place. So we see, we make observations, and some of these are like very, in deliberate, right? Like you're just walking, you see something, you're just like mm -hmm. doing this filing, you know, the observations go somewhere. So I think the first question is, do we just observe or do we have a position and the observation is based on a theoretical position, right? Um, so like, for example, but maybe go through the so you define the induction, right? Yeah. And then could you do deduction and then abduction, and then we can talk about all three? Sure. Of course. So deduction is then like having a 
general principle or a number of principles the theories and frames and then having those in mind and then based on those principles we observe and then we reach conclusion right um so as i was explaining uh, a minute ago this observation and theory or observation or theory and both abduction really i think i think is this idea that it's it's focusing on finding the best possible explanation right so it's like um i could be i could be wrong but my understanding is that is that it's it's like going to reiterate to a process right so you may have an observation that observation may be inspired by a by a theoretical framework or a hypothesis and then you observe come back and so i think it's a reiterative process so so these are i think uh, again i'm on the third i'm not quite clear but i wanted to um you know discuss as to what you think and i when i showed you the book right mm-hmm. uh, pierce's well this is not uh, pierce's this theory of abduction mhm yeah uh kt fan he has this is a short introduction to his theory so yeah i mean i i don't know what you think how how uh, how do you um go about these things okay i like that well wow. well okay so the stanford encyclopedia of philosophy um has this article on abduction because i don't you know use that word very much and so um why don't i just read this out loud um it says that there's two kinds okay so in the philosophical literature the term abduction is used in two related but different senses in both senses the term refers to some form of explanatory reasoning however in the historically first sense it refers to the place of explanatory reasoning in generating hypotheses while in the sense in which it is used most frequently in the modern literature it refers to the place of explanatory reasoning in justifying hypotheses and in the latter sense abduction is also often called inference to the best explanation and so then it says this entry uh, in the encyclopedia is exclusively concerned with abduction in the modern sense although there is a supplement on abduction in the historical sense which had its origin in the work of charles sanders pierce see the supplement pierce on abduction so is that the sense that you mean i guess uh because you're talking about like generating you know, hypotheses right can we uh i was can we read this again you, so there's uh, two kinds of abduction um and so i guess the earlier one maybe pierce came up with the term i want to find wikipedia what wikipedia says uh because i like wikipedia and probably more simple Okay. And it says uh Oh, Wikipedia doesn't have much. That means it's a difficult <laughs> science is reasoning, abductive reasoning. Okay. Oh. Okay. So abductive reasoning also called abduction is a form of logical inference that seeks the simplest and most likely conclusion from a set of observations. It was formulated in advance by American philosopher Charles Sanders Peirce beginning in the last third of the 19th century. Abductive reasoning unlike deductive reasoning yields a plausible conclusion but does not definitively verify it. abductive conclusions do not eliminate uncertainty or doubt which is expressed in retreat terms such as best available or most likely one can understand abductive reasoning as inference to the best explanation although not all usages of the term abduction and inference to the best explanation are equivalent in the 1990s as computing power grew the fields of law computer science and artificial intelligence research spurred renewed interest in the subject of abduction diagnostic expert systems frequently employ abduction so and it compares deduction induction and abduction so why don't we go here 
abductive, or maybe we go back up a little bit here, deduction, induction, abduction. So deductive reasoning allows deriving B from A only when B is a formal logical consequence of A. Okay, so you have a system. And so you have a, a language, a conceptual language, a logical system. And in that system, B will follow from A. That's deduction. So in other words, deduction derives the consequences of the assumed. Given the truth of the assumptions, a valid deduction guarantees the truth of the conclusion. For example, given that wikis can be edited by anyone and Wikipedia is a wiki, it follows that Wikipedia can be edited by anyone. So it's happening within a system. Induction. Inductive reasoning is the process of inferring some general principle B from a body of knowledge A, where B does not necessarily follow from A. A might give us very good reason to accept B, but does not ensure B. For example, if all swans that we have observed so far are white, we may induce that the possibility that all swans are white is reasonable. We have good reason to believe the conclusion from the premise, but the truth of the conclusion is not guaranteed. Indeed, it turns out that some swans are black. And so a famous example of that is um, Hume, uh, I think in the 1700s, I guess, he talked about, you know, the sun sets every evening, right? But that doesn't guarantee that it's going to set, you know, this evening, right? It, it's just, you know, just because we've always seen it set, it's just simply because it's a different character. You know, these are observations, like you say, but that doesn't force a general rule. But there's this uh, reasoning that wants to lift up that rule. So the question is, well, so what's happening here? How's it going on? And, and then, you know, are... Can we know anything? Can we, in what sense, can we know that the sun will set? You know, like, what are we talking about? So now let's look at abduction. Abduct abductive reasoning allows inferring A as an explanation of B. As a result of this inference, abduction allows the pre precondition A to be abducted from the consequence B. Deductive reasoning and abductive reasoning thus differ in which end, left or right, of the proposition A entails B serves as conclusion. For example, in a billiard game, after glancing and seeing the eight ball moving towards us, we may abduce that the cue ball struck the eight ball. So this is like working backwards, right? Like thinking backwards to say, well, you know, um, I made it to this Zoom call, right? So presumably I got the link, right? That would be abduction. I mean, how else could I have you know, it's just kind of like working through the possibilities. Like maybe there's some weird way, right? Like I could have gotten to the Zoom call without that. I may have had to be just kind of like randomly somehow, right? I don't know. Um, I mean, there is some weird ways that could happen, but basically like the best, what they call, you know, the most plausible thing is what, well, what is it? Uh, they call it the best explanation. Here, inference to the best explanation. Okay, so presumably I got the link, right? Like, so I think that would be an example of abduction, right? Like if someone's, you know, well, and so maybe um, I can relate that to the thing I do know about uh, Charles uh, Sanders Pierce, which is very important for this wondrous wisdom, um, is that uh, for knowledge, uh, you need uh, four points of view, whether, what, how, why, and he mentions, uh, I, I would say, um, he references three of them when he talks about uh, the kinds of signs there are, right? So he has, uh, he's one of the founders of semiotics, the studies of signs. And so um, he says like a cup, right? Like, let's say I have a cup here, right? So how could I represent this cup with a sign? So one way would be to have a picture of a cup, right? And that would be an icon. I could draw a primitive picture of a cup. It would be an icon. But another way to uh, reference it would be to make use of cause and effect or to make use of abduction, this kind of like thinking backwards. So I could say, well, suppose I had a um, white um, tablecloth and on the white tablecloth, I had a ring that was like coffee brown, let's say, or tea brown, right? So that is a sign that there was a cup there, right? It's a sign of the cup, but we don't see the cup. 
but we know how cups work and we understand that, oh, there was a cup here. Right? Again, the movie, for example, you would see that there would be an index of the cup. So you're more clever. You know, you're kind of telling people to kind of like, well, figure it out, right? And then the last kind of, um, but basically it's the laws of cause and effect or conclusions and grounds. You know, you have certain grounds, you draw certain conclusions, you're able to work backwards, let's say. Um, but then the final one would be a uh, symbol. So the symbol would be like the letters C-U-P, you know, or in Pashtun, it could be different, you know, languages. There's all kinds of symbols you could use. They're completely arbitrary in a certain sense, right? So, so to understand from C-U-P that that's a cup, you would have to know like why there's this cup. Like you'd have to know everything about everything about everything to be able to be that smart, you know, to figure it out. Like basically someone has to tell you, right? But to be able to, you know, to figure that out. So uh, the abstract symbol is based on the level Y. It, it kind of, um, the, the indexical way cause and effect is like on how you kind of have to figure out how things work. The icon is like what you have to be able to make a sensory image, right? Work with that. But why does he only have three? Because, you know, the, the level he's not talking about is the thing itself. That would be weather, like whether there's a cup. So he's not talking about it because signs are kind of implying that there's more knowledge, right? So it's three from a four point of view. So, so that's um. So, so that's sorry. The, the question that I have is: is are there? Does he have like names for these levels or like for these typologies, types of knowledge? The icon, index, symbol. He's talking about three types of signs. But I'm just saying okay. that this is one more of many examples. You know, every philosopher has levels of knowledge, let's say. See, so sometimes they'll have three out of four. An idealist would focus on why is the most important, then how, then what. And then say, you know, whether is not really real from the ideal point of view, like whether things are. See, a materialist would be the opposite. It's like it's whether that's important, you know. What is just kind of like a shadow of that? How is just kind of some kind of, and then why just doesn't make sense? Why is a fiction? Why we don't, There's no why in the material world, right? So Pierce is very interesting. Like he bridges it kind of interesting. Like he has the three levels that an idealist would have, you know, an observer would have, but he's talking about the observed. Do you see? He's talking about the thing you're observing. He's not talking about, so, so he kind of bridges the two. But the... You know, we have this discussion like, is wondrous wisdom, can it possibly be a science? Can it be predictive? But the idea is that, look, wondrous wisdom says there has to be a fourth level. He's just hmm. not. And why doesn't he have it? And it's explaining, you know, well, it's not hard to find. It's the cup itself, right? So that's evidence for <laughs> its application of the theory and its evidence for it. Like, so when we had that, uh, you gave your talk about the five uh, concepts in this book, right? And the wondrous wisdom says, yeah, but there's a sixth concept because it's a frame of four plus two and you're missing, you know, you got three plus two, it should be four plus two. So there's, you figure out like it's going to be vision, you know, because that's the, it's on the Y level. It's like goal oriented, you know, you can compare it to software engineering or whatever. So uh, no, I think that's scientific, right? Like, like it's based on, so, and that was a question like, what does science have? Science has to be inductive because it has to, so and science has to be deductive because you have to be able to apply it. You know, you have to be able to take things you learned in one place and apply them elsewhere. So that means it has to be deductive. You have to have a system that you can play with. And then I guess abductive is a certain sense. It's like another way of um, a higher level way of being able to, uh, you know, to be able to run it backwards. I guess that's what they're doing. And so though maybe just to add like how I would picture this in the wondrous wisdom is that there's three minds, right? Like, so Kahneman and Tversky have this book, uh, or Kahneman basically had this book, Thinking Fast, Thinking Slow, and he won a Nobel Prize in, in um, economics. He's a psychologist. So he's, and I would say like the system one, which is thinking fast intuitively, knows the answers. Like that's the kind of unconscious, the intuitive, uh, the feminine. <laughs> and then the thinking slow, like questioning, like so not answering, but questioning rational, um, you know, deliberative, uh, building up this conceptual language, that's the system two, what he calls. And I'm saying there's a system three that balances the two, that would be consciousness. So you have the unconscious, you have the conscious, you have the consciousness, right? Uh, and so that relates to these things. So like the observations are made by the unconscious that, you know, we don't, I mean, they're just happening, right? 
But we need to convert that into this conceptual language. So the conscious is trying to reword this in some conceptual language. So that would be induction. It's taking these observations and trying to match them over, you know, with a, so with cognition. I mean, so, but basically like emotion is driving it usually in our lives, like because uh, emotion has these things it want to say and it's forcing the, um, co the, the conscious to update its model. But the consciousness is saying, no, no, no. Like I will tell you when the model is right. You make your models this way, that way. But then I will tell you when they fit and then I will hardwire it. So I'm kind of like holding the brake. The consciousness is holding the brake. And then when it's satisfied, it goes, okay. And then you should feel peace because the emotions are correctly. Uh... So I think in that model, like you can see where the observations coming, they're from the unconscious. You can see that there's this need to put them in the conscious. So this is would be called, I guess this is what emotion is asking for. It's you know kind of driving that. Then, so in that language, you want to have a language where it's deductive. So like if, if the model is successful, you shouldn't need to be uh, relying on observations. You should be able to move from one place of the model to the other. That's the goal of science is to have this language, right? And then abduction is probably, um, so maybe, I, I guess maybe in this model, like abduction, they say like, so you have these two layers, you have the conceptual language and then you have the, um, the data from the world that's coming through the unconscious, right? So abduction is like the application saying, look, if the model is good, we can kind of like work backwards and figure out like what's happening in the world, right? So that's like what our brain does. Our brain makes a projection onto the world. We live like in a hologram. Like it turns out like 90% of the signals going out into the world, only 10%, the 10% is coming in saying, you know, this is not right. This is not working. This is not, but anyway, so we're thrusting back and we're looking for the descriptive, like we're looking for like the explanations, like, well, what must be happening here? You know, this thing doesn't there anymore. Yes, it moved, right? Like, what are the explanations? So abduction is kind of like trying to solve that problem going backwards. Uh, so this is so interesting. I first, I want to uh, ask a question and then I, um, also you mentioned the book. Um, mm -hmm. Is it the Thinking Slow and Thinking Fast? Is thinking Fast, the... Thinking Slow by Kahneman. Fast. Okay, that's the book. So the question is, so in an abduction, does it prioritize uh, the conceptual framework um, from over the observations or the data that comes through the unconscious or I don't know through the conscious uh, or does it doesn't really prioritize I think I think what uh, like just to make some points I think abduction assumes the system is functional and complete and perfect. First of all, like it, it's, you know, it's using the assumption that we know what things are, right? Like uh, as our, as our concept, our conceptual language and model is correct, but we want to apply it. So we are trying right. to make sense of data, like what's going on, right? And so right. we're trying to make sense of the world to see, well, if our, can we apply what we know? And so it's going to work backwards and say, well, this is deducing, you know, I mean, not deducing, but like, I guess, abducing these things saying like, the person didn't show up to work, you know, because they drank, right? or whatever. It's like, or whatever, like, you know, we make these kinds of weird things and they're not really proven or real or whatever. Like, and a lot of them may be very prejudicial, right? But, but they, right. and so you, you talk, right? um, so how does that work backwards, right? Like there's this whole thing. And then so maybe one of the things, like there's this whole learning cycle of taking a stand, following through, reflecting, etc. But I think in a certain sense, like abduction is kind of like this following through. Like, you know, you're trying to use your system and apply your system. And then you get to see like, well, what is it good? Like if, it, if you have it, because you never use it by deducing. <laughs> That's, the, 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 the deduction doesn't really get you. What deduction does, it kind of like... Um, it kind of like makes your system hang together like work. It kind of like fills in the gaps in your system, but it doesn't really serve to usually apply it. So you usually need to work backwards to uh, uh, deduction is working forward. So a deduction is kind of like filling out your system. Uh, and so that's kind of like maybe, maybe that would be like taking the stand. And then it would be like following through is like, okay, 
let's put in play, let's abduce things, let's draw all kinds of like inferences, right? And that expands our contact with the world because we start to notice a lot more things, you know, become suspicious or we become, you know, and then the question is, okay, now that we're noticing a lot of things, it's reflecting. It's like, well, hey, like, so what are things really like? And like, can it's like, does our system really make sense? Maybe there's something wrong with our system. So abduction doesn't question the system. Abduction applies the system. Induction gives you the opportunity to question the system, right? And kind of like give you new principles. And deduction kind of lets you bolt it down. Okay. Do you, so that's interesting. Do you see any of the three models as a uh, well, yeah, model of reasoning or the type of reasoning that was superior? Uh, one also, we have four minutes left, so we want to yeah. Wrap no, so if it's a three cycle, then they're all equally important, and I think that seemed to be believable. Um, they don't seem to be directly related, like to the unconscious, conscious, consciousness, in the sense that, well, the one bridges from the unconscious to the conscious, right? But it's interesting going back, I guess. So, cognition, I guess, is a two step, like emotions kind of driving it one way, but cognition. Emotion would take you from unconscious to the conscious. It speaks to the conscious. And co cognition is how it imposes backwards. But this seems more, um, that three cycle seems more elaborate and kind of more to the point, I guess, how it actually happens. You know, that it's, uh, but what what does seem like the conscious it lives in its own world. So the conscious kind of has to take care of itself, basically. Like the conscious is kind of like this little world where it gets the signals, but then it has to make this world. The uncon The consciousness expands it so what what the hypothesis that could be tested was that like when you do abduction you are using your conference mind conscious mind and i think in as much as you got prejudices that could be evolved etc it's really like hard wiring your prejudices in a very using your consciousness to kind of like use your prejudices and that really must kind of like strengthen your prejudices like when you see that they're useful right like because you're making inferences based on them so it kind of feeds this kind of like hard wiring into that but that it's definitely like you cannot do abduction unconsciously i think i like maybe that's not, you can certainly do it quickly yeah maybe i'm wrong about things you mean so, yeah no but this is this is very very helpful uh what do we what do we want to so i think we should email uh communicate via email as to right and i think we agreed on what we have for the next uh so for next time meeting. just to conclude we'll um have the whole group uh discuss a topic on um uh, on um sociology psychology maybe values the intersection with the psych sociology of uh, drug addiction and uh, mental illness and we'll try to maybe consider like can this is maybe to think like this these types of reasonings do they make sense not just psychologically but do they occur sociologically maybe that's a question does society have a mode of thinking you know does society yeah. deduce or okay so Thank any you. last words or last uh, benediction for us no i think this was this was wonderful i think i would uh, like to uh, i will read this book before our next meeting just to uh, you know have um more informed uh, so so we'll both be able to make ideas. presentations uh, maybe you can give a new presentation about this for my and then i can and then we'll have a yeah. discussion and we just want yeah. to uh we're thinking uh and praying for uh our friends and humans uh in uh israel and palestine uh the terrible uh over-the-top uh atrocity that uh israelis uh civilians suffered but also like to understand two million People in Gaza live just, it's not clear how, you know. And so I, these I are two you. kind of unseparate things, both we care about and just to pray for God to save us. So join the sociology study group. We'll work on it. Thank you for watching this video. Please uh, go to mathforwisdom.com or simply read the description to this video to learn how you can join our Math for Wisdom discussion group and our study groups. Thank you for liking this video, for subscribing to this YouTube channel, and for supporting Math for Wisdom through Patreon. So, you know, you've been always, always very encouraging of me uh, exploring many 
novel ideas, you know. So, you know, I've already I get that from you. You know, you're sort of my in a way over the years been my bit of my conscience, uh, you know, like uh, that compels me to compels me to keep working. Um, we're also very open to, you know, kind of novel ideas. So, you know, even if it's kind of some harebrained thing, like I, I think of time editing or his, history editing or something, which is really non, non-physical. When I speak with you, when I discuss things with you, you're, you have a mathematical background, so uh, you can appreciate uh, whatever mathematical treatment that I, I add, you know, I give to my thoughts.